Have you ever wondered how others type so fast in the game without their thinking face and want to get in on that action? Have you found someone in the Animal Crossing community you really like? Having friends in the game will help you water your flowers, clean up the weed situation, collect items, share ideas, buy from Daisy May, or sell turnips to the Nooklings at better prices. We'll cover off different topics like friend codes and where to find them, how to befriend people you've encountered in your travels, what it means to be besties in the game, and how to block people like the infamous golden armored Naminsky plaguing YouTubers always claiming he's not a thief, yet helps himself to flowers and fruits often uninvited. We'll also look into different methods to host and visit others. Let's get to it. Hey YouTube, it's Alexi Giovanni here and wanted to put a guide together to help you in your quest to get more friends in the Animal Crossing community. If you've got Nintendo Online, it unlocks the ability to not only have other people visit your island, but also visit other people who have the game. Every time you do, your Switch will keep track of the players you've played with, and this is by far the easiest way to add friends. You can do it whilst you're playing the game, or afterwards. To do it mid-game, just hit the home button to show your main Nintendo screen and navigate to your avatar. Navigate to the add a friend option on the left and then head to the search for users you've played with option. Players are listed newest to oldest and I'm going to befriend my channel member Teet. All you need to do is send that friend request. You should see a blinking dot to notify you that you've got a new request. Navigate back into your profile page to find your pending friend request list. And you can always choose not to be friends and a block option if you're being hassled. Teet thankfully accepted it on her side. If you want to see that all went well, just bring up the Best Friends List app on your Nook phone and use the L and R buttons to find the right filter. There she is, we're friends now. The other way to add friends is a little bit more manual, and that's via the friend code. To get your own friend code, you can find it on two spots in the profile screen. One is on the main profile screen, and the other one is a more convenient location in the Add a Friend subsection. Once your potential friend shares their friend code, use the search with a friend code option and enter the code without the leading SW. So what does friendship give you, I hear you ask? Well, it has a couple of perks. First is you're notified when your friends are playing, and the other is you get to open your gates to any of your friends so that they can visit without having to enter a dodo code. This is particularly useful if you're protective of your island and you don't want to disclose a dodo code. The other thing you can do is send them items they might be after, or things you're after. It's for a small cost of 200 bells, and this is open to both friends and best friends, which I'll get to very shortly. You can simply send them a message as it is, or make the most of the 200 bells cost and send them an item per message. Whilst you have one or more people on your island, be sure to invite them to the roost for a cup of virtual coffee. Last person in is the one that shouts for everyone. Thanks for the coffee, Stacy. Best friends, like friends, will inform you when they come online, but unlike regular friends, you can communicate in-game with them. Just fire up that Best Friends List app, you're able to use the Send to All feature to tell everyone that you're online, or you can communicate directly with your bestie of choice. Leave me a comment to tell me how many friends do you have on your Switch for Animal Crossing, and how many of those are besties. As you can see, there's a cute little message interaction on screen, but sometimes you might get a little distracted in all the excitement as I head to the airport. If you do, bring up that chat log app and you'll be able to see the history of all your messages, whether it's with your bestie or anyone else on your island, so don't forget to use that. One limitation of a regular friend is that they can't use destructive tools like axes or shovels. The other thing a best friend can do is use the destructive tools on your island, so when you can trust that person enough, by all means upgrade your relationship. This can quickly help you tidy up your island beyond just picking weeds. So how do you make a friend into a best friend? Well, that's the easy part. Just bring up your best friend list app, locate the friend you want to turn into a bestie and send them a request. If you want to track the progress of the incoming and outgoing best friend request, you'll find the requests you just sent in the out box and those awaiting your approval in the inbox. And here's another friend catching a fish. Let's give her a clap. Whilst you're hosting, you can hit the minus button on your left Joy-Con to get the option to view all of your visitors' passports. If things get ugly, you can use the option to report any of them or just view their details. 
Once you've finished your hosting, you can either wait for your visitors to go home individually via the airport, or you can hit the minus to send everyone home at once. That's a convenient way to finish up quickly and saving everyone banking up at the airport. Once finished, you'll bid them farewell at the airport and your gate is automatically closed for safety. Trying to type with the on-screen keyboard when your switch is docked is downright frustrating. Wouldn't you like to type as fast as you can on a keyboard or on your phone? Well, you can. There's two points at the front of your switch which allows you to plug any USB keyboard and get the benefit of being able to communicate with it. Type in your message, hit the enter and done, message posted. Of course, you can also use the Nintendo Online app to speed up your typing output without plugging in a keyboard. Wondering just how much faster it is? Well, I use the same term for using four input methods to benchmark their speed. Not surprising, a physical keyboard was fastest, closely followed by Nintendo Online, handheld mode was third, and no surprise, trying to type with your Switch docked, forget about it. One great thing about the Nintendo Online app is being able to recall the last message to resend or edit. The other added benefit from a communication point of view in the Nintendo Online app is of course being able to recall recently used reactions. You'll have a full catalogue of your learnt reactions and the convenient stack of the last five recently used reactions. Now in order to be able to type using your phone, you'll need to first enable the Nook link. At the title screen, which is where you normally hear the theme music, hit the minus button to reveal the intimidating and scary Tom Nook, who warns you that this is a dangerous area of the game. Note you do have to have a Nintendo Online account and linked Nintendo ID on your user on the Switch. Navigate your way to the Nook Link option and enable it. Once this is done, you'll need to download the Nintendo Online app, which is available in both App Store and Play Store. I'll leave them linked in the description below. Let's show you how to do it on the iPhone. You'll be asked to either create or log in to your Nintendo ID. In my case, I've already got an account, so I'm logging in again and going past the robot protection. If all goes well, you'll find the associated link to your user. You have to select it to progress and go through the onboarding screen, and eventually you'll land at the Nook Link section, which looks like the phone that you use in the game. And just a reminder, do watch His and Hers Design Wars, featuring her. If you've got more than one Switch to play this game, don't worry, it's more common than you think. Just do the same thing as the first user to enable it, then navigate to the second screen to the settings to reveal the Change Players option. If you don't have Nintendo Online, don't worry, because you can still play with your friends or family using local play, but still note that this is limited to playing in the same physical room. I've tested it with consoles that need to be about 3 meters away max. Once you're on the island, or after the fact, you can send them a friend request the same way as you did previously shown in the video. Another way you can become friends before you fly to the island is to search for local users where both players have to match the same symbols, for security reasons. In theory, you can add up to seven players at the one time, which could be fun. You'll see switching between the black and white consoles here to represent the two players, so I hope that you're able to follow along. Once you match the symbols, it allows you to then select them to ensure that you're picking the right person to befriend. Both consoles have to pick and select the other person to ensure that this is a complete connection. Once you've done this, you've effectively become friends at this point. You may need to relaunch the game or let internet kick in. Of course, check the status using the same way mentioned earlier. And there you go, looking at the friend list, we can see that both sides of the fence will see the other person that we've just made friends. Special thanks to my channel members who were kind enough to make appearances in this video. If you want to make more friends, check the linked video for three free apps that I use for Animal Crossing. This is Alexi Giovanni signing off, and until next time, see ya!